they came before Columbus, long before the Vikings, before there were maps, before there was even a name for America, across windswept glaciers, through frozen corridors. They stepped onto a land untouched by humans. For decades, scientists thought they knew the answer. They said the first Americans crossed a land bridge from Siberia around 13,000 years ago. That was the story. Neat, simple, wrong. Because then came the bones, scattered in ancient caves, hidden under layers of ice and time. Some dated back 15,000 years, others even older. But they didn't match the expected DNA profile. Who were these people? Where did they come from? And why does their genetic trail point somewhere unexpected? Now, thanks to breakthroughs in ancient DNA extraction, the truth is coming into focus. Not just about when humans came to the Americas, but who they really were. It's a story written in fragments of bone, buried genomes, and ancient migrations across a lost world. And the answer may rewrite the very origin of civilization in the Western Hemisphere. So now we ask, who were the first Americans really? And what secret did their DNA reveal? For most of the 20th century, textbooks told a simple story. The first people arrived in the Americas via the Bering Land Bridge, a frozen corridor of land that once connected Siberia to Alaska. This migration was believed to have happened around 13,000 years ago, during the final stages of the last Ice Age. These early settlers, known as the Clovis people, were long considered the original inhabitants of the continent. Archaeologists pointed to their distinctive stone tools, razor sharp, fluted spear points as proof. Sites like Blackwater Draw in New Mexico became holy ground for this theory. But even as this story solidified in classrooms and museums, cracks began to form beneath its surface. Evidence started to emerge from places far outside the expected migration routes. Monte Verde in Chile, a site dated at over 14,500 years ago. Paisley Caves in Oregon with coprolites, fossilized human feces, dated to nearly the same period. These discoveries didn't just stretch the timeline, they shattered it. Because if people were already in South America thousands of years before the Bering Corridor opened, how did they get there? The implication was profound. Either the migration happened far earlier than believed, or it followed a completely different path, perhaps by sea along a kelp highway, hugging the Pacific coast. But without DNA, these were just theories. Bones degrade, climates destroy, and for decades, the human genome remained locked away, sealed in ancient remains too fragile to speak. Until now. Thanks to advances in genetic sequencing and the recovery of ancient DNA from skeletons once considered silent, Scientists are finally listening to voices long buried. The mystery of who first walked these lands is no longer just archaeological. It's genetic. And it's leading us to a revelation unlike anything we've ever imagined. It began with a skull. Not just any skull, but one with features that didn't match the known profile of early Native American remains. In 1996, Along the banks of the Columbia River in Washington State, two college students stumbled upon what they thought were old animal bones. But what they found was far older, far more human. Buried just beneath the surface was a nearly complete skeleton, male, around 40 years old at death, with a cracked skull and severe injuries that suggested violence. Radiocarbon dating would later show he lived over 9,000 years ago. He became known as the Kennewick Man. But his face told a different story. Unlike the rounder skulls of modern Native Americans, his cranium was long and narrow, resembling the ancient peoples of Polynesia or even Japan. Theories exploded. Was he a lost mariner from the Pacific? 
a forgotten branch of humanity? Initial attempts to extract DNA failed. The bones were too degraded. The science not yet ready. Worse, the discovery sparked controversy. Native American tribes demanded reburial, claiming him as an ancestor. Scientists filed lawsuits to continue the study. For nearly two decades, Kennewick Man lay in limbo between politics, belief, and the limits of technology. But as other ancient remains surfaced, some even older, the mystery deepened. In Nevada, a 10,600-year-old mummy showed similar non-native features. In Brazil, skulls resembling those of Australian Aborigines hinted at a radically different migration pattern. These weren't isolated anomalies. They were signals. Whispers from a lost population scattered across a continent they may have reached before anyone else. The hunt was on, not just for bones, but for proof embedded in their very blood. Unlocking the past is never simple, especially when that past is wrapped in politics, controversy, and fragile strands of ancient DNA. After decades of dead ends, a breakthrough came not in a cave or an excavation site, but in a lab, through the quiet hum of sequencers and the delicate precision of molecular archaeology. In Denmark, at the University of Copenhagen, geneticist Eske Willerslev and his team pioneered a technique to extract ancient DNA from extremely degraded human remains. The technique was revolutionary, allowing scientists to decode genomes that were once thought lost to time. And so, the bones of the Kennewick man were carefully reanalyzed, with permissions finally granted under strict conditions. The process was painstaking. Tiny fragments of bone were ground to powder, purified, and scanned for surviving genetic material. Most of it was contaminated or unreadable. But then, a signal emerged. Simultaneously, other skeletons, some over 12,000 years old, were being re-examined across North and South America. The team focused on ancient remains from places like Spirit Cave in Nevada, Lucia Woman in Brazil, and even Ice Age sites in Mexico. Each carried genetic clues, yet the data didn't match modern Native American DNA in any simple way. Instead, scientists began to see something unexpected, a ghost population, a group of people whose genetic signature echoed faintly in ancient remains but vanished in the modern world. They called them Population Y. The Y stood for Yipiquera, the word for ancestor in the Tupi language of the Amazon. These people shared some traits with modern indigenous groups, but also with populations in Southeast Asia and Australasia, suggesting a possible connection to people once thought to have never reached the Americas. The implications were staggering. Could early humans have crossed the Pacific thousands of years before recorded history? Or had multiple waves of migration carved different paths into the continent, long before the ice melted? The scientific community was split. Some dismissed the findings as contamination. Others argued for convergent evolution. But as more genomes were sequenced, the pattern held. Something was missing from the traditional narrative and ancient DNA was beginning to show what archaeology alone could not. The moment came quietly. In a high-security, clean lab, under layers of sterilization protocols, a technician stared at a sequence blinking on a monitor, one that had never appeared in any known Native American genome. The DNA recovered from the Kennewick man, after years of legal battles and scientific doubt, told a story that no one had fully expected. Contrary to earlier assumptions based on his skull shape, the genome showed a clear ancestral link, not to Polynesia or Japan, but to modern Native American tribes, specifically those from the Columbia River Basin. The facial features had misled generations of researchers. The truth was in the blood. But the real shock came from comparisons 
with even older remains. Samples from the 12,600-year-old Anzic child, buried with red ochre and Clovis tools in Montana, revealed a genome closely related to the Kennewick man and to populations from Siberia. This supported the idea of a Siberian origin, but it wasn't the full story. Because then came the Luzia woman. Her skull, found deep in a Brazilian cave and dated at over 11,000 years old, looked nothing like the Anzic child or Kennewick man. And when scientists managed to retrieve fragments of ancient DNA from similar remains in South America, they found a trace element, small but consistent, of Australo-Melanesian ancestry. This ghost signal had no obvious explanation. It didn't match any known migration model. And yet, it appeared again, in the genomes of some isolated indigenous groups in the Amazon rainforest, the Yanomami, the Surui, tribes with no historical contact with Australasia. It was undeniable, a distant connection, stretching across oceans and millennia. This wasn't contamination. It was real, verified by multiple labs, cross-checked against control samples, published in peer-reviewed journals, and it forced the scientific world to accept a new reality. The Americas were not peopled by a single wave of migration. They were a mosaic, a complex layered arrival of multiple human populations, some from Siberia, others possibly from coastal Asia, and perhaps even a seafaring people from lands much farther away than anyone had dared to imagine. Picture it, a world frozen in time. The last ice age still clutching the northern hemisphere in its icy grip. Towering glaciers block the interior of North America, while sea levels sit nearly 400 feet lower than today. The continents look familiar, but also alien. Coastlines stretch farther. Islands connect where oceans now divide. And into this strange world, the first footsteps fall. They are not a single tribe, not a unified people, but waves, ripples of humanity flowing across a fractured world. One group moves east from Siberia, following herds of mammoth and bison across the Bering land bridge. The air is sharp, the sky endless. These are the ancestors of the Clovis people. They carve spears from stone, hunt in packs, and leave behind tools that will one day define a civilization. But while they walk over ice, another group sails. Along the Pacific coast, perhaps in small rafts or canoes, a seafaring people hug the edge of the world. They survive on kelp forests, fish, and shellfish. Their journey is silent, slow, and patient, stopping on islands moving with the tides. They may have come from coastal Asia, Taiwan, or even the shores of ancient Indonesia. We don't know their names, but their descendants would leave genetic whispers in the Amazon, in the Andean highlands, and in the bones of Lucia. Far to the south, perhaps even earlier, another migration unfolds. It is not certain how, but the traces remain in skulls shaped like those of Australian Aborigines, in DNA strands shared with Papuans, and in the oral histories of tribes that speak of ancestors arriving from the rising sun. These people might have crossed the Pacific in ways we still struggle to comprehend. Were they driven by curiosity, hunger, storms, or were they following stars that have since vanished from our sky? Together, these groups, diverse, scattered, resilient, peopled a continent once thought untouched. They hunted megafauna, built sacred sites, and passed down languages, myths, and genes that would shape the new world. What we call America today was never discovered by one people. It was arrived at, again and again, by many. The story of the first Americans is no longer a straight line. It is a maze of ancient paths, lost voices,
and genetic fingerprints hidden in the dust of forgotten ages. For centuries, we believed the land was empty until 13,000 years ago. Now we know it was filled with movement, with lives, with migrations so ancient they stretch the limits of our imagination. Science has peeled back the layers of myth and theory to reveal something far more powerful. Truth. A truth written not in stone or legend, but in DNA. That fragile, miraculous code that outlives time, buried deep in bones left behind by those who walked before us. The idea that the Americas were settled by a single wave from Siberia has crumbled. In its place stands a new understanding, complex, beautiful, and still incomplete. These lands were shaped by explorers, travelers, survivors from across the globe, from ice-choked plains in the north to wind-swept oceans in the west to the dense jungles of the south. Each group left a mark, a clue, a piece of the puzzle. And this is just the beginning. New sites are still being uncovered. New genomes are waiting to be read. The next piece of ancient DNA might come from a cave in Alaska, a tomb in the Andes, or a forgotten grave in a riverbank in Brazil. And with each discovery, our understanding of who we are and where we come from deepens. This is not just about the past. It's about identity, ancestry, and the shared human story that connects us all. We are the children of migration, of survival, of curiosity that spanned oceans and epochs. If this journey fascinated you, don't stop here. Hit the like button. Subscribe for more incredible stories at the intersection of science, history, and mystery. And if you want to dive deeper into the secrets of ancient civilizations and the breakthroughs of modern genetics, explore our other episodes. Because the past is not gone. It's just waiting to be uncovered.